everyone. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Today, we're talking about political risk insurance program for Ukraine through the World Bank's Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency. What does this program mean and why is it important for Ukraine to get it? To talk more about the peculiarities of political risk insurance, we welcome to our studio today Alfred Prouse. He's the General Secretary of the International Council of Business Associations and Chambers of Commerce in Ukraine. Hello and thank you for coming. Hello, thank you for inviting me. So we've had our first interview just three months ago in March 2019 yes. and we talked about the International Council of Business Associations and Chambers of Commerce in Ukraine and um, since it's been three months could you update us on the latest changes that has occurred in the, in the organization? We have uh, strengthened our focuses of business activities. Mm -hmm. uh, we have welcomed uh, one additional members, or I think even two additional members in between. It was on one hand Canada, mm -hmm. Canadian, Ukrainian mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce, and it was the Swedish Business Association. Mm -hmm. And we have gained a lot of interest by some other European uh, institutions bilateral institutions, uh, they are coming as observers, as uh, uh, continuous guests, etc. So we are winning uh, publicity and we are winning interest. Concerning uh, the uh, uh, areas of our work, we have focused on two things which are related to foreign direct investment. First thing that is to curb or to mitigate measures to do that, uh, labor migration and uh, brain drain, which is very important for Ukraine. And the second issue, our today's topic, that is establishment on a political risk and conflict insurance. Before we dive into the main topic we're going to be discussing today, let's remind our audience what the goals of the Chamber of Commerce working in Ukraine are. The goals of the International Council of Business Associations and Chambers of Commerce in Ukraine, uh, with our members from Ukraine to Canada, United States and uh, countries in Europe, uh, Turkey, China, mm -hmm. uh, is to improve the business environment uh, in Ukraine. Uh, to foster the dialogue between government, companies uh, and uh, uh, other institutions and uh, uh, to foster uh, foreign uh, direct investment uh, to Ukraine, which is to, uh, related uh, to our today's topic. Mm -hmm. What is political insurance risk? What does it mean? Uh, political risk, that means it's a risk of war, it's a risk of uh, appropriation uh, of uh, um, assets. It's uh, all, all kinds uh, of risk which is related to a political interference mm. by the government mm -hmm. or outside the government by external um, stakeholders. That may be a neighboring country. This is also a political risk if uh, that is cooking up further. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, what we say is this political risk, uh, which is strongly perceived uh, by many potential investors uh, from, from, from many countries in the world, is preventing them to invest in Ukraine. So, in the process of providing the political risk insurance for Ukraine, what's the role of ICBAC? Uh, our council is a loose organization, as I told of uh, meanwhile 10 members, and uh, we want to trigger, we want to initiate uh, uh, the establishment uh, of uh, such uh, a political risk and conflict insurance. That means lobbying and influencing government and potential donors of, um, of guarantees international donors. Okay, this is very ambitious. Do you have somewhat of an action plan? We have an action plan. First, it's a question of political will in Ukraine, in the Ukrainian government. This is available, but not so much outspoken. Uh, we do hope, since the whole thing will not work within one month, that the new government, uh, uh, possibly, hopefully, under the influence of uh, the new president Zelensky, will declare very openly the political will. Mm -hmm. This is one step. Uh, the second step is uh, lobbying, lobbying international 
uh, countries, international potential donors of guarantees. And uh, the third step uh, or the third point is uh, uh, to try to bring it to the agenda in the Toronto Reform Conference on Ukraine uh, on 2 to 4 of July. Um, and we see that this will be possible because Mrs. Freeland, the foreign uh, minister of uh, Canada, and Canada is very, very, very prone and uh, very helpful to Ukraine and mm -hmm. understands mm -hmm. Ukraine, uh, that uh, she is prepared to put it on the agenda. And uh, as far as we know, uh, President Zelensky will go there. Mm -hmm. So lobbying, preparing that uh, to receive at least a decision in principle to start such a project. Except for Canada, what other partners are there for Ukraine to guarantee this political risk uh, insurance? We do expect that uh, the US mm -hmm. is advocating this. We do expect that the Swiss are very positive. Uh, we do expect that uh, some countries in Scandinavia may be favoring it. And uh, also Japan has mm -hmm. been very positive in the past years. Mm -hmm. So there are some countries we strongly count on that, will, that they will support such an initiative. In order for all of these countries to support this initiative, what kind of requirements does Ukraine need to fulfill? The requirements, requirements of Ukraine at the end, uh, they may be that uh, the government gives a guarantee. Mm -hmm. um, for these investments, uh, political risk insurance guarantee uh, concerning issues which is under the control of the government. If it is beyond the control, such as war risk, for example, risk of conflict with Russia or with the separatists, etc., etc., uh, there uh, the government uh, may not be asked or should not be asked because this is beyond control. But whatever is, is, is within their influence, within their control, they should guarantee that there is no political risk. Growing the investment capacity of Ukraine is under the government control, how can we, how can we reach that? Um, Expanding our investment opportunities. As everybody knows, and uh, uh, I may refer to the uh, foreign direct investment last year, this was around $2 billion, uh, they, and that is a little bit more, or around 2% of GDP gross mm -hmm. national product. If you take out some restructuring of banks, which mm -hmm. was mandatory. And if you take out the uh, investment in alternative energies, solar and wind, which happened practically only because of the world class and world record green tariffs, you are at several hundred millions, which is extremely little. Uh, and uh, uh, some, 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 some countries around Ukraine, uh, in, in the West and in the South, uh, they are achieving five to ten times mm -hmm. in terms of a percentage of uh, uh, the volume of economy. What are other countries existing in the world that do have political risk insurance? Uh, Already. There are some institutions. I just name one that is Euler Hermes in Germany. Mm. They are um, insuring some risks for investments. But what we are talking, and, and there are some other special measures, there is a, a OPIC, just to, uh, to give an example, but MIGA, and that's a World Bank institution, mm -hmm. which has been administering, successfully ex uh, administering uh, such programs in the West Bank, in Gaza. Mm. And they have been operating programs in Libya, in Afghanistan, etc. So mainly in countries where there is a uh, quite high, and I think even much higher, mm -hmm. political risk as mm -hmm. compared to Ukraine. And this political risk mainly being a conflict risk, war risk, conflict risk. So there are examples. And that means taking MIGA as the operator of such a system, World Bank, World Bank Group, means we don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> so what is needed is maybe some small changes in the MIGA organization, uh, be it in Paris or wherever they are domiciled uh, mm -hmm. for this purpose. I, I'm not a specialist on that. And have a country re representative on site who is taking care. 
and the operating by MIGA, World Bank, would make sure uh, and would ascertain that there is no corruption in uh, uh, handing out guarantees uh, to investors. Okay. Coming back to ICBAC, what are the future plans of the Chamber of Commerce? So, our association, uh, or so to say our council, uh, does want uh, still this year uh, to, uh, have a, uh, to, to, to have a big event uh, on uh, curbing and mitigation of uh, labor migration and uh, brain drain, mm -hmm. because this is also extremely well connected uh, with foreign direct investment. Can you imagine new investment coming when there is no workforce and no brain no. of handling it? <laughs> So, uh, I can't. it's all focused, it's all in connection with foreign direct investment and with such uh, foreign uh, political risk insurance fund of, say, one billion dollars, to give just a guess, um, this would bring in um, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of total Mm -hmm. investment mm -hmm. of uh, last year, for example, and at the same time it would certainly serve as a multiplier for uh, additional investment and it would be a strong signal. Look here, Ukraine is different, Ukraine does not have much risk, come here, invest. And that would be if um, uh, President Zelensky will put that on the table in Toronto, uh, beginning of July, mm -hmm. that could even be a quick win for him, implemented Agreed. by the new government and the new parliament. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. That was Alfred Prowse, he's the General Secretary of the International Council of Business Associations and Chambers of Commerce in Ukraine. Thank you so much for watching UATV, stay tuned for more.